Chelsea King, the quintessential all-American girl. Outgoing, compassionate, and pretty. A straight A high school student, out for her daily afternoon run in her hometown of San Diego. But this day is different. Chelsea doesn't come home. I had just gotten home from the gym and Kelly just gotten home from running errands at the grocery store. And uh, we met in the kitchen and she asked me if I had heard from Chelsea yet because Chelsea's the kind of kid that always tells us where she is. We just had this feeling, <laughs> as parents do, I think. Her disappearance rocks the community to its core. As much pain as Kelly and I and our family are in, um, the community's lifting us up <laughs> and uh, just embracing us. And without that, we'd be really, really uh, unbearable. Our affiliate, KSWB, is on the scene as law enforcement and thousands of volunteers ramp up the frantic search. The intensity of the search continued to increase throughout the weekend. What we know about Chelsea is that she's a really bright kid and she would do everything she could to let us know where she's at. Then, 72 hours into the search, cops find a devastating piece of evidence. Chelsea's underwear is found near where she was running. It contains DNA of this man, John Albert Gardner, a convicted sex offender who served five years for lewd acts with a 13-year-old girl. Cops arrest him on suspicion of rape and murder. Two days later, this dramatic announcement. Although positive identification has not been made, there is strong likelihood that we have found Chelsea. Then, the heart-wrenching confirmation. Body was found not far from where we had previously discovered a piece of evidence, a shoe. It was about 15 feet away from a tributary that leads down to the lake, and it was uh, covered in a shallow grave. But this monster's reign of terror is not done. There is another horrifying revelation. Gardner has more victims. And while in custody, he leads police to the remains of Amber Dubois, a 14-year-old girl who had been missing for a little more than a year. Cops say she too was raped and murdered by this psychosexual serial killer. In a chilling prison interview, Gardner describes Amber's murder, telling her, the picture of stabbing her is not a memory I'd like. I thought I'd like it, but I didn't. I like the raping part. I don't like the killing part, especially if it's bloody. The defendant in this case um, was just arraigned on two counts. The first count is murder. Attached to that count is the special allegation that the murder was committed uh, during the commission or attempted commission of a rape. Gardner pleaded guilty to the murder and rape of both Amber and Chelsea. He's serving two terms of life imprisonment with no possibility of parole, and a third life term for a separate case of assault and attempted rape. Could these twin tragedies have been prevented? In his probation report stemming from his prior conviction, a court-appointed psychiatrist called him a danger to the community. He is simply a bad guy who is inordinately interested in young girls. I want to thank everybody in this community, everybody that's touched our hearts, everybody whose heart was touched by Chelsea, everybody that helped in the search, everybody that's going to help us in our healing. I want to thank you. Chelsea wants to thank you. Out of the tragic darkness, the King family brings a ray of light. They champion a law that bears their daughter's name. Chelsea's law is signed by then Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's designed to put child predators away for good. When we passed the law, we said we wanted a law that targeted the worst of the worst. Uh, that, that you can't you can't rehabilitate, you can't reoffend, um, and and so we wanted that one strike life without the possibility of parole to make sure that John Gardner's of the world who did it the first time would never get out again uh, to do it a second time. I have nightmares every night. I, I have pretty bad ones. I don't really want to talk about them. They're pretty bad. They wake me up at night. Tyler King was just 13 when his big sister's life was brutally ripped away. The events of those days are seared in his memory. Immediately when you hear that 
something is wrong and that they're not home, you immediately know that they're dead. At 17, Tyler made the documentary Chelsea's Light, A Brother's Journey, hoping that one strike laws become the rule of the land against the worst child predators. Our son has not only survived this, but he's thrived through it. The Kings have also established the Chelsea's Light Foundation, dedicated to protecting kids and working to have Chelsea's law passed in states beyond California. If I could, I'd create an island. I'd put them all there and let them fend for themselves. But, I mean, that's not gonna happen. So that is why Chelsea's law is a one-strike law where they go away for life. The law might have saved countless girls. More than 1,000 predators have been charged under the California law that bears her name. And though it came too late to save Chelsea, her light will burn forever in the hearts of her family. Gardner now spends his days in one of the most high-profile prisons in the state of California. Some of his fellow inmates, Charles Manson, Philip Garrido, the man convicted of kidnapping and raping California girl, J.C. Dugard, and Mexican serial killer, Juan Corona.